Good morning. Well, welcome to Compass Christian Church, all in-house and on Zoom. We're so glad that you can join us on this bright fall, sunny Sunday morning. Would you please rise and um, join me in our call to worship? Come, saints of God, to a new heaven and earth to the holy city, God's new Jerusalem. The dwelling place of God is with humanity. God wipes away the tears from our eyes. The earth is God's and the fullness thereof, the world's and all who dwell therein. Who shall ascend the hill of God and who shall stand in God's holy place? All whose hands are clean and hearts are pure shall know God's vindication and blessing. We give thanks to God who has qualified us to share the inheritance of the saints. Let us worship in their honor. Please join us as we sing for all the saints. join me in our opening prayer. Holy being, we gather in your presence to celebrate your goodness, the goodness we have seen in the dawning of a new day, 
the goodness we trust in the one who faced death with the dawn of a resurrected life, the goodness we remember in those who live in the eternal dawn of your presence. So we open our lives to a new day of life with you, lift all our prayers to celebrate your eternal goodness this day and evermore. Amen. You may be seated, and as you are, I invite our children to come forward. I haven't seen you in so long, and we'll sing, Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, every color, every race, all are covered by God's grace. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you again. I've missed you so much. Today is a special day in our church. Of course, every day is special when we come together, but some days are more special than others. Christmas is a special day we have at church. Easter is a special day we have at church. And today is called All Saints Day. Can you say that with me? All Saints Day. Did you know that you are a saint? You probably don't know what a saint is, do ya? Well, a saint in the Bible is what people in the church called each other. I'm a saint, you're a saint, and we're all saints together. Saints in the Bible were those people who tried hard to follow Jesus. So you see, I think, we all must be saints because we all try to follow Jesus. We love God, we love our neighbors, and we even love our enemies. But sometimes you'll hear somebody actually called Saint so-and-so. I keep losing my place, I'm so sorry. <laughs> when someone dies, a person might say he was a saint or she was a saint. And then sometimes things get named after saints, special people. Did you know there's a city in Florida called St. Augustine? Have you ever been there? Ever heard of it? Well, Augustine was a person who lived a long, long time ago, and he sp helped spread the word of God around the Florida area. So St. Augustine is named after him. Right up the street here, we have a church. And it's called St. Anne's Episcopal Church. Anne was another person who lived a long, long time ago. She was one of the followers of Jesus. So they named their ch church after her, St. Anne's. Today, we're remembering the saints of our church. We're remembering all the people of our church who died last year. Have you ever known somebody who's died or passed away? Maybe a grandpa or an uncle or a neighbor? Some of you might remember one of our saints. Her name was Alice. And Alice loved children. She loved you guys and she loved being here to see you. When someone dies, we usually feel sad. Sometimes we cry. Maybe you've even seen your parents cry when someone they know died. We cry because we love that person and because they were saints, because they tried to follow Jesus and help us to follow Jesus. And so we do things to honor them. Today, we're gonna honor our saints. We're gonna light a candle in their honor and we're gonna hear a bell ring and we're gonna pause for a moment of silence to remember our beloved saints. So, St. Lydia and St. Rose, would you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for making us all saints. But more than that, thank you for the saints that we honor today. Bless their families and all who loved them and give them peace. Amen. Thank you. There's worship and wonder or get some materials to work on. Thank you.
We gather this morning to celebrate the lives of persons we name as saints and those unnumbered multitudes who praise God already around the throne. Some have touched us personally. Others have touched and reshaped our society and our world. All of them are known to God and all are precious in God's sight, as are we, the saints of God here on earth, being made fit to share in their inheritance in the ages to come. Let us rejoice in God's saints this day and every day. I'd like to invite you to join me in a litany for our saints, but I'd like to give you a little bit of preface, a little heads up. It's not just leader all, leader all. There are a couple of parts that are just the men. Kurt's going to lead you in that. And there are parts that are just the ladies, and Debbie's going to lead you in that. When we get to our time of remembrance in the litany, I'm going to light, name each name aloud and light a candle. We'll hear the ringing of a bell after each name, and then we will pause for a few moments of silence to remember that person and their families who are here or not here with us today. So let us begin in a spirit of prayer for our litany. Gracious God, you are to be praised for the women and men whose faithful witness to your love inspires each generation of your people. Abraham and Sarah, who believed your promise even when they were old and barren. Isaiah of Jerusalem, gentlemen. Ruth, whose loyalty to Naomi became a model for people of every time and place. Esther, who risked her life before the king to save her people. Paul of Sardis, who was beaten and in and shipwrecked while carrying out the gospel. Mary Magdalene, who ran from the tomb crying out that Jesus was alive. Martin Luther, who spoke afresh of salvation by grace alone through faith. Thomas Campbell, Martin Stone, and Alexander Campbell, who yearned for a church with the... Carolyn Neville Peer and Matilda Hart Yonkin, who created missions throughout the world and benevolence throughout the nation all of the saints of this congregation whom we name before you today. Michael Pig. Jeannie Young. Jack Kohler. and Alice Woodward. All the saints of this congregation, let us continue in prayer. God of all people, 
As we recall the names of these witnesses, we pray they will inspire us with their extravagance, excessive love, blatant mercy, radical affection, exorbitant charity, extravagant faith, and inordinate hope as in the way of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come into our time of prayer together, first let me say hello, church. Hello, church on Zoom. It is so good to be back with you all today. And I'm here for the long haul. So get used to seeing it. I tell you, I was not good on sabbatical. I had such huge plans and projects that I was going to do. I did a lot of sleeping and a lot of resting. Um, so thank you for that time away so I can be refreshed. Well, before we enter into our time of prayer, we do want to remember this month is a new month. So today we are praying locally that we all strive to practice empathy before judgment and compassion before criticism, helping to strengthen our communities and our relationships. Regionally, we pray for peaceful elections with honesty and transparency and for our leaders to pursue the common good over personal achievement. And globally, we pray for those who are providing aid to the sick and hurting in war-ravaged areas of our world to receive safe passage. So let us sing together where the Spirit of the Lord is. As we enter into our time of prayer, I invite you to spend a few moments in silent prayer, lifting before God our own joys and concerns and laying at God's feet our own sins and repentances. After a few moments, I will voice aloud our pastoral prayer today. And following that, we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. I invite you today to say that Lord's Prayer using any words or language that you feel comfortable praying, for that is your response and your part of our prayer together. So let us go to God in prayer. Living God, in whom there is no shadow or change, we thank you for the gift of life eternal and for all those who, having served you well, now rest from their labors. We thank you for all the saints remembered and forgotten, for those dear souls most precious to us. Today, we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into your glory. God, 
mindful of all those choice souls who have gone on ahead of us, teach us, and each 21st century disciple of every race and place, to follow their example to the best of our ability, to feed the poor in body or spirit, to support and comfort the mourners and the repentant, to encourage the meek and stand with them in crisis, to affirm those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, to cherish and learn from the merciful, to be humbled by and stand with the peacemakers. And finally, God, let us clearly recognize what it means to be called the children of God and to know we are to be your saints, neither by our own or inclination or in our own strength, but simply by the call and the healing holiness of Christ Jesus, our Savior and your Son. For it is in his name that we pray as he has taught us to, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. A reading from the New Testament, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Also from the New Testament, 1 Peter 4, 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, you old folks will know what a dictionary is, although I did use the online dictionary. The definition for stewardship the conducting, supervising, or managing of something, especially the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. When stewardship first appeared in, in the English language during the Middle Ages, it functioned as a job description denoting the office of steward or manager of a large household. Over the centuries, its range of reference spread to the oversight of law courts, employee unions, college dining halls, Masonic lodges, and many other organizations. In recent years, the long established management sense of stewardship has evolved a positive meaning, careful and responsible management. This sense is commonly found nowadays in contexts such as stewardship of the environment, the family business, etc. It also occasionally appears as an adjective in phrases such as stewardship fundraising, that is fundraising aimed at building good relationships with donors in order to keep them loyal. The combination of stewardship and relationships is what I've been asked to speak about this morning. When we hear the word stewardship, especially in church, we usually think of giving money to the church. But as I hope you've gotten from the previous words, stewardship is not as much about giving to something as it is about taking care of something. All of the things we have are gifts from God, blessings from God. Relationships are a treasure, a blessing from God something that requires care and management, stewardship in other words. 
Relationships mostly require the giving of your time, which is one of the other blessings we have received from God. I've had a lifelong relationship with the church, over 30 years with this particular congregation, and that relationship has been like family to me. Our social relationships have almost all been with church people. I have spent many of those years caring for the physical parts of the church as well as the persons of the church. It must be a treasure because it's where my heart is. I have relationships with many people that go back over 40 years, some of whom are members of this congregation, some who have been in the past. Those relationships have, main, have been maintained by caring for those people and maintaining the contact. On the other hand, I have lost track of most of my high school and college friends because I didn't steward the relationships. They must not have been treasure to me because my heart is where your treasure is. And yes, money does play a role in your relationship with the church. If you want to care for and maintain the health of this organization, be a good steward of this relationship. Then, then giving is required and not only money, but time and talent as well. So as we approach consecration day, when we receive our pledges, I hope you'll consider your stewardship of all of God's gift to you, including his church. Today, our reading comes from the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not, does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Before I actually get into my sermon and actually pray us into that time, I want to draw your attention to something that is on the back, on the welcome center in the back. For the next four weeks, I'm going to be using a document and um, for all of my sermons, and it's the document basis for our stewardship campaign this year. Stewardship equals right relationships. Um, some of you know that when a minister is called or, or ordained or commissioned, they have to sign something called the Ministerial Code of Ethics. And we, most of us, sign that gladly with our whole heart. So what is little known is that there is also a congregational code of ethics, if you will, the ethical guidelines for congregational conduct. It's put out by our denomination and it is encouraged for churches to covenant together, to look at this document. And when you call a new pastor, you sign this covenant together of how to act and how to be in relationship. So I thought what better time and better way to use this document as our basis for our stewardship campaign. So I encourage you, uh, there, there's a few copies in the back, but we can make more. Um, take, take one when you leave today, take it home, look it over. Uh, we'll be studying it for the weeks to come. My sermons may be a little bit different, a little choppy here and there, um, but we're going to go through, we're going to work through this document together over the next four weeks. Would you pray with me? And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, family. We are once again here together in this place of worship. We are here to share, to learn, to grow. 
We are here to feel the warmth of God's love and the touch of God's grace. We are here to see God's face in each other and to hear God's voice in the silence of our hearts. We are here to be filled with the Spirit and to be transformed by the Word. Today, we gather to reflect on two things. First, as we will be doing each week this month, we will reflect on the ethical guidelines for congregational conduct. We will be using this as our guide for our stewardship campaign, Stewardship Equals Right Relationships. Today, we will also reflect on a passage from the first letter of John, a letter written by a man who walked with Jesus, who heard his words, who felt his touch. A letter filled with love, with hope, and with promise. A letter that speaks to us today as it spoke to those who first heard it. So we're going to begin with section one of this great document. And the, doc the section is entitled, Our Relationship as Members to One Another. Letter A, we will treat one another with courtesy and kindness. We will endeavor to maintain an attitude of Christian love in all of our relationships. This love is not just a feeling or an emotion, but a reality that shapes our lives. It's a reality that gives us a new perspective, a new purpose, a new power. It's a reality that changes how we see ourselves, how we see others, how we see the world. It's a reality that challenges us to live differently, to love differently, and to be different. This love is not just about us, but about God. It's about God's nature, God's character, God's own heart. It's about God's desire to be in relationship with us, God's desire to bless us, and God's desire to use us. It's about God's faithfulness, God's patience, and God's grace. Section B tells us, we will welcome the expression of differing viewpoints and will seek to create an atmosphere of trust and confidence that will encourage free discussion. So this love that we're talking about, this atmosphere of trust and confidence is not just for us, but for our whole world around us. It's a love that reaches out, that includes, that embraces. It's a love that breaks down barriers, that builds bridges, and brings healing. It's a love that seeks justice, that shows mercy, and serves. It's a love that gives, that sacrifices, that saves. Taking us to letter C, we will seek the, to keep confidences and refrain from gossip. We will seek in all we do and say to strengthen character and dignify personality. As we look at points C and also the next point D, I believe we have to look at both of them in the light of true transformation. It's a transformation that begins within us. It starts in the heart, as Steve said in the depths of our very being. It's a change that is both subtle and profound, both gradual and sudden. It's a change that is often imperceptible to us, but is always visible to God. 
The second aspect of this transformation is that it's a transformation that is brought about only by God's Spirit. It's not a change that we can bring about by our own efforts or our own strength. And I feel I'm preaching to myself here. It's a change that is wrought only by the Spirit of God who dwells in all of us. It's the Spirit who convicts us of our sin, who leads us to repentance, who guides us into all truth. It's the Spirit who empowers us to live a life that is pleasing to God, a life that is marked by love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and yes, self-control. Section D tells us we will remember that our personal conduct gives evidence of our sincerity and reflects upon the good name of the church, the body of Christ. So as we ponder these truths, C and D, let's not forget that this transformation is not a destiny, but a journey. It's a journey that we embark on the moment we put our faith in Christ. It's a journey that we continue to walk day by day, step by step, moment by moment. It's a journey that we don't walk alone, but in the company of Christ, who is our guide, our companion, and our friend. Section E says we will reaffirm this document at least triennially. Yeah, try annually and review these guidelines whenever we are in the process of calling new pastoral leadership. So this is what brings us here today. We are entering a new era here at Compass Christian Church. Now I'm planning on being with you for a long time. So it will be another long time before you call your next pastor. So I hope that we can covenant today and over the next four weeks of this study, leading up to my installation service, that we will affirm to look at this document every three years together. It's good practice. And there is more in this guide. If you take it home today, you'll see there are a couple other points in section one that I didn't get into, but I hope that you will all take one and study it on your own this week and the rest of the month. And I hope, also hope that you're sitting there thinking today, what does this possibly have to do with stewardship? Again, as Steve so beautifully said, stewardship is using our time, talents, and treasure for the glory of God and the mission and ministry of Christ's church. In my humble opinion, we cannot use any of these gifts until we are in right relationship with God, with Christ, and with each other. So this is our starting point. My friends, let's not wait for this transformation to happen. Let's not sit idly by waiting for God to do God's work in us. Let's actively participate in this process. Let's cooperate with the Spirit. Let's surrender to God's leading. Let's yield to God's prompting. Let's embrace this transformation with open hearts, with open minds, and with open table. Let's allow God to do the work in us, through us, and for us. Let's allow God to transform us into the image of Jesus the Christ, for not only God's glory, but for our good and for the good of the world around us. And to that, we can all say, Amen.
Each week in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ, we give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never done that before today, we invite you to do so as we sing a hymn together. I invite you to meet me down front and I will share with you a profession of faith that we find in Holy Scripture. And we'll look forward to your baptism in the near future. If you're joining us by Zoom, I can reach out to you the same way. Maybe today you realize you have made that decision in one way or another, but today, as we begin a new journey together, you would like to reaffirm or rededicate your life to Christ. We do that the same way. Or maybe today you would like to join Compass Christian Church and make this church your church home. As we sing this hymn together, we also prepare our hearts and minds for communion. So sing with us, an upper room did our Lord prepare. You. I'm so happy and I'm going to try to get through this without crying. Today, Becky Lynn and Jeff come to us through transfer of membership and want to be a member of this church for a very, very long time. So I'm going to ask you each a question separately. Becky Lynn, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? and promise to follow and love him through all of your days. You. Jeff, do you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and promise to love and follow him through all of your days? It is my honor and privilege to accept you as brand new members of Compass Christian Church. and I extend to you the right hand of love and fellowship. Let us pray. Dear God of all creation, we are so happy that you have brought Becky Lynn and Jeff to us. We thank you for their leadership and love of your church. May their work with us be a blessing and may we be a blessing to them. In your most holy name we pray, amen. The invitation is simple. Come and eat of the feast. Not a meal to nourish the body, but to feed the soul. We receive the wine and bread connected to the ages, to the saint of old who felt unworthy, to the seeker eager to know God, to the teenager who wonders what it's all about, and to the child who eats with unburdened faith. Woven into this time, the hopes and tears of all the generations. There is great joy here. No one is turned away, for Christ is our only host. So come and eat of the feast. Scripture tells us, that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner, after the meal, he took a cup. And when he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Just a quick word about our communion. You'll be served by our deacons, and we invite you to take the two cups that are together. In the bottom of the first, or the cup on the bottom is a piece of bread that we invite you to eat as it's served to you. But we invite you to hold on to that cup of juice as we will partake of the cups together. Because all are welcome at this table. You do not have to be a member of this congregation or even this denomination to take part. All of our gluten is also gluten-free. Let us pray. God of all ages, you sometimes call us from places of comfort and security to risky journeys of faith. We are often afraid to follow, unwilling to risk changes in our lives. Help us put aside that which holds us back so that we might follow you freely. We recognize that this table is a symbol that wherever, wherever we are on our faith journeys, you are there. You sustain us by the bread we break and the cup we pour. In these elements, we remember Christ, transfigured, suffering, dying, risen, and in our midst today. May your spirit be our guide as we walk in new paths of faith. Amen. a prayer at this time. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today I'd like to share a powerful verse from Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. In this simple yet profound statement, Jesus provides us with a key to abundant living. He reminds us of the importance of prioritizing the kingdom of God above all else. When we seek God's kingdom first, when we place him at the forefront of our lives, everything else falls into place. Our worries, needs, and desires are all encompassed with his loving care. 
Today, as we give our tithes and offerings, let's remember the profound truth contained in this verse. Let's make a conscious choice to seek God's kingdom first, both in our hearts and in our giving. God of all generations, as we worship today, we offer our whole selves to you, all that we have and all that we are. Like your saints who have gone before us, we pray that you will help us be bold in our mission and in our witness. Amen. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I even get to use my word. We have a plethora of church life events to share with you all. First, today, the youth are meeting after church to make chocolate-dipped pretzels. So if you want some chocolate-dipped pretzels, you got to come to the bake sale on Tuesday and buy some. So youth today, Tuesday, Election Day bake sale. There is a sign-up sheet somewhere on the welcome table. We need people to sit and sell. Um, so if you can help us even for an hour, two hours, uh, sometime on Tuesday, we'll be here all day from sunup to sundown, and we need help selling our baked goods. Tuesday morning, we still will have Disciples Women. We will be in the conference center. We just have two more chapters left in our book, so please join us. And now, something that I am so excited to share with you. There have been lots of folks around that have been questioning um, the, the crisis in the Middle East and people take sides and don't understand the full, what's going on, the history and everything behind it. So I went to Ryan Replogle, our dear doctor candidate from Hebrew Union College, University and Seminary, and I said, Ryan, can you help us understand how we got to this point, how Israel and Palestine got to this place why is it so incredibly bloody and tragic and all those questions? And he said, well, I have a friend. And he and this friend have just presented something very similar to this in Ryan's class at Xavier that he leads. So Rabbi Ari June, and you have probably seen that name. He has been on several of the news channels. He is the uh, director of the Jewish Community Relations Council, JCRC, if you see that around. And he and Ryan are good friends. Uh, Rabbi is going to come and share a quick presentation with us, a little history lesson, hopefully. And then Ryan is going to lead us in conversation. Bring your questions, bring your thoughts, bring your heart. This will be a time of open and honest sharing and questioning uh, with the rabbi and with our dear Ryan. I hope it is, I hope we fill this, this sanctuary. Uh, we have invited the churches of District 12, and I wouldn't be surprised if it actually goes out for all of Ohio, um, the Ohio region. So we will continue our Zoom that day. If you can't be here, uh, join us on Zoom for the conversation. And also throw in here, bring a couple of dollars. We're going to throw in and get some pizza. Um, so we can sit and, and talk. And then the youth are going to meet either during that or after that, or they're gonna be part of it, I think, for a time, but there will be youth group fall gathering on November 12th as well. 
Then another thing that we have to start getting prepared for and get excited about, as you know, District 12 does two worship services a year. We gather together on Good Friday, and then we gather together around Thanksgiving. And we are hosting this year. We were chosen, picked, volunteered, however you want to say that, many months ago, because they were thinking that, one, it would be either wrapping up my interim ministry with you, or two, you would have a new pastor. Well, that's kind of all happened at the same time. So we're going to celebrate together District 12 Thanksgiving right here. And for those of you who love to sing, we are doing a mass choir. Instead of each church bringing a, a choir and they do one piece and that church does one piece, we're going to join together, choir of 50, I hope, and we are singing Revelation 19. <laughs> so if you've been in the choir here, you know Revelation 19. Um, Revelation 19 is a, just an amazing piece, and I cannot wait to do it with District 12, with all of the churches in District 12. So if you'd like to sing in mass choir, you don't have to know the piece at all, come at 6 o'clock. We will practice. The worship service is at 6.30. And then following worship, we are going to have a cookie fellowship. Ladies, by the way, you're going to be baking cookies all month. So just start baking now and finish baking all month long. Um, so we are asking each church to bring cookies to share for the cookie fellowship. And if you notice our little Charlie Brown tree back there, we couldn't find the tree that was supposed to be used. So we found something. Um, it is time to start buying Christmas presents for the children of Faith Alliance that are in need this, this Christmas. So the tags are there. You know how it works. Take a tag or two or three or ten and go buy Christmas presents and bring them back to the church uh, December 3rd. December 3rd is when they're due back. We didn't get many tags, um, so we can get more. So take all those today, and then we'll get more uh, to take next week. Katie Baird. Some of, those, some of those younger folks love that online giving stuff. So um, that's awesome. I did not realize that it was two separate things. So that's awesome. So uh, that will be in this week's email. And hopefully it will go out on Wednesday this week. Um, but I was just in the office. So hopefully you all were patient with me this past week. Now, um, once our candles go away, we would like over the next four weeks our stewardship campaign is stewardship equals right relationships we would like to decorate this whole space with your family photos or pictures of yourself if you're if you're a family of one we want to see and we want to see it grow each week we get more and more pictures if they're overflowing i'll put up more tables um, if you want to bring a picture that hangs on the wall, we've got even an idea for that. So go ahead and bring a picture if it hangs on the wall. But starting next week, even Tuesday, ladies, if you want to bring them Tuesday to Bible study, start bringing in your pictures of your the people in your life that you love. Uh, we started this out. You'll have to come check this one. The big one is Lauren, our secretary, amazing. Um, and her beautiful family. And then, of course, we have an FC Cincinnati picture. I don't know who that would be from but go FCC. So are there other church life events? Debbie, elders meeting, elders meeting two. Meeting yes, we haven't had a meeting. Yeah, in person Tuesday night, seven o'clock in the conference room. Dawn.
Life is short. Eat divert, dessert first. And Debbie. Linger longer lunch. I'll come around. Oh, yes. We're going to Mexican for linger longer lunch. I hope everyone comes and joins us. Mexican right down the street next to Buffalo Wild Wings, El Caporal, which we have a minute to have a brownie because they don't open till noon. So stay, have a brownie, and then we'll go have some Mexican. Anything else? It's good to be back. Would you all stand for our closing song? Now, don't think I'm seeing now yet. This is the same song we closed with last week. So if you were here, yes, it's the same song. But it fit so incredibly perfect with, again, with this week's lesson. I said, well, it's not going to hurt us to sing it again. It's a great hymn of the church. Church of God have done with lesser things. You've heard us all in mind and strength to serve the King of Kings. Rise up, O Church of God, the church for you does wait. With strength unequal to the task, rise up and Make it great. And now I bless you with the sure knowledge that you belong to the Alpha and Omega. You are children of the one who is and who was and who is to come. God has called us to be a nation and a royal priesthood. Now go out into the world as servants of the kingdom of God. Amen.